polynomials. Nails. Happy man on the finger. Ooh, 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 ooh. All right, monomial factors of polynomials. Objective, to divide polynomials by monomials. How? Magic, that's how. I'm going to teach you magic. Math the magic man. All right. Well, to divide a polynomial by a monomial, we divide each term of the polynomial by the monomial and add the results. So let's do it. I'm going to divide each term of the polynomial by this, okay? So I'm going to rewrite it like this, okay? I'm going to divide each term by it. I'm going to get, okay, I can brush off. Nice. Sweet. And sometimes you can actually look like this is like old school division. You know, like you did this, you could actually go, okay. How many 3's go into 6m plus 18? Let's see. 3 goes into 6m. 2m times. 2m times 3 is 6m. 6m minus 6m is 0. Bring down the 18, man. 3 goes into 18. 6 times 6 times 3 is 18. Remainder of 0. Awesome. I get a 2m plus 6 also. All right. Keep moving. Here we go. So, we're going to see this is going to be divisible here. We're going to break this down. How many 7m squares go into this guy? So, if I reduce this, I can pretend that's my fraction right there. I cover up half of it, right? It's kind of like magic, man. See that? Okay, that becomes 2. All right. How many 7m squares go into that? Well, 7 goes that 6 times m squared. All right. 6m squared. I reduced it. This is divisible. How did I do that magic? No, man. Look at it. It's 14m squared over 7m squared, which is 14 over 7 times m squared over m squared. That number's 1. That number's 2. 2. Do the same thing here. You reduced it. Magic? No. There is no magic in this class. All right. Now, let's see what here. Do all these guys go in nice and even? Let's see. Um, if I broke this down and put these each over, because, you know, if I put this guy over it, this guy over it, and then we end up being nice and reduced, you know, there'd be no fractions, right? But look what happens here. These don't go unevenly. If I write these all over each individual term, um, over the denominator, x squared y cubed over x squared y squared plus xy squared over x squared y squared. Notice what we get. Here we have these three of these up top. There's going to be one left over up top. And there's going to be one left over in the bottom. Let's see what happens here. The x's cancel out. There's going to be a y left over up top. And look here. Let's see. The y's cancel out. There's going to be an x in the bottom. See, I end up with this stuff here. It's going to be some negative exponent action. It's not evenly divisible. Okay? It's not evenly divisible. There's some stuff left over here. It's a reduced form. The other way you might see this is xy to the negative 1 plus y, plus 1 over y to the negative 1. Because if we just did our subtraction here, we saw 3 minus 2 gave me the x, y to the 1 minus 2 gave me the y to the negative 1. 2 minus 2, 0. 3 minus 2, y up top. Here we go, x minus 2. Hey, man, I did this wrong. Oh, oh whoops, I did that wrong. It should be 1 over x. Whoops, missed this one up, man. Good thing I went back and double check, dude. All right, same thing, you know what I'm saying? All right, going on. Factor. When I ask you to factor something, sometimes you're just really saying is to express this number as the product of the greatest monomial factor in another polynomial. Basically, take out the biggest thing out of both. Um, but just like we factor a number like 16, I can write 16 as um, 8 times 2. Okay, I'm trying to write this number as something times something. So this is a number, I want to write it as a product, this times this. Just like 16, I write it as 8 times 2. So, but here, one of the uh, one part of the product I want to be the greatest monomial factor. So what's the biggest thing that goes into the, both of these? Um, how about the biggest number that goes into these, I think, is 4, isn't it? And what's the biggest um, 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 variant, well, largest variable section that can fit in both a to the 1? A, and how many B's can go into both B cubed, right? All right, so now what we're kind of doing here is we're saying, all right, this is what this thing goes into both. Now I know how many of these go into this. Basically, what do I multiply this guy by to get this? Well, 4 times what? 4. A times what? Nothing. Well, 1. A times 1 will be, give me A. B times, oh, that's it, done. If I take this and multiply by 4, I end up there. I end up getting this back, because I'm going to, you know, if I can distribute this through. And I say 4ab cubed times what equals this? Well, 4 times 3, 
and B cubed, because 4 times 3 is 12, A, B3, B3, B6, nice! So what I did was I expressed as a product of the greatest monomial factor and another polynomial. Basically, factor that, baby. Oh, yeah. All right, next one. I'm going to try to factor something out of this hogwash. All right, what's the largest? I look at the coefficient. Um, I think 3 is what's coming out of each one, so I'm going to take a 3 out. I have A to the, what's the most A? The, the, like I look at the minimum A, A, okay, and 1A is the most I can take out of each one. And I look at my B, well, it's going to be 1B also. So I say 3AB times what equals this? Well, 3 times 2, A times A, B times 1, so I forget about it. 3 times 1, yeah, A times 1 will give me that, B times 1, so I get 1, 1, 1. A lot of people forget that, put, put that guy in there, don't forget it. And um, finally, what about this guy here? 3 times positive 4, um, A times A, B times B squared. So I factored it, did the greatest thing out, right? So what do I have? When I, if I, and how do I double check? I mean, I took this number, just like if I took 15 and I wrote it as 5 times 3, okay? I took this and wrote it as this number times this number. Double check to see if it works, see if it, you know, you still have this number. Are they equivalent? Well, 3AB times 2A is 6A squared B. Check. 3AB times negative 1 is negative 3AB. Check. And 3AB times 4AB squared, 3, 4, 12, AAA squared, B, B squared, B cubed. 4, sorry, 12, A, B cubed. Check. Got it. Bingo, bongo, bingily, bongo. All right, I better get moving here. I only have three minutes to get through all this stuff. All right, so again, simplify these things, all right? Simplify these, all right, I'm going to take half of this. 2A minus 3 plus half of I get A plus 2. And what do I get? 2A and A is 3A. Negative 3 and 2 is minus 1. Look at that. All right. Over here, I'm going to simplify these guys, all right? How many ABs go? How, 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 okay, put this guy over there, then this guy over there. Where do I reduce this? What's left over? Just 1A up on top. And what about this? The ABs are gone, plus 2. Minus, and what happens here? The B disappears, I get 2A. And what? Ooh, I'm subtracting all of this stuff, so i got to be careful. So I get minus, okay? B, I got a B. Uh, minus B. So it is A plus 2 minus 2A plus B. And, um... A minus 2A is minus A plus 2 plus B. Isn't that nice? All right. So, done. Da dun dun <coughs> All right. So, now what do I do? Oh, right, here we go. You have a couple area problems you want to talk about. So, here's some important formulas. Base times height. Area of a circle is pi r squared. Why? Because if I build the square with a radius, r, r is r squared. Pi of these squares, see these squares? If I built radius, radius pi of them fit in the circle. So, I multiply that square by pi, because pi of them go in. And a semicircle is just half that, and a quarter circle is a quarter of that. That's tough. Now, find the area of the, the square region, the shaded region. The way you do this, you say, all right, isn't this the same as having a square, the square, and cutting out of that a circle? Exactly. So we're going to do this minus this. So let's write the formula generically. Um, this is um, base times height, or um, side times side, that's a square, right? Minus pi r squared. So let's look for some numbers. All right, what's the side of this thing? How far is this? Well, this is x, which means this is x, and, and this is x. So I have x, x, so this has to be 2x, and then I have x, x. So over here I have 2x. So this guy is 2x times 2x, it's 4x squared minus, and the area of the circle is pi r squared. What's the r? x. So instead of pi r squared, I write pi x squared, which is pi x squared, and factor out anything common. They both have an x squared. Let's take it out. 4 minus pi. There we go. Did I get that in there? 4 minus pi. All right. I got like one more minute to do this. All right. Um, let's do this guy here because I only have like a minute left. 5x. All right. That's 5x. How am I supposed to figure out what this is? Well, let's see. Um, here's a radius. Here's a radius. 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 It happens to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 radii. Oh, so this must be x, 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 x. Sweet. So isn't this the same thing as rectangle minus circle, circle, semicircle? Exactly. So 5x, this is x, x, this is 2x. 5x, 2x is 10x squared. And this is pi r squared, pi r squared. So I get plus 2 pi r squared plus pi r squared over 2. Da -da 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 -da. In fact, this stuff out. Yada, yada, yada. So just remember, this is the fun part. Talk to you later.